See, one of two of you are asking me how do you update your GitHub? Okay, you remember we sh we used GitHub, so all the code goes into the GitHub repository, right? So uh, you came to me and asked me how do I update the latest workspace from the GitHub? I hope whatever I have recorded in the morning is already there. Let me check. Uh, normally, it's GitHub. So ours is called SA forty five. So you can see that there are more projects inside. So you want that to be upgraded, right? So what you have to do is you can go into your uh, Git perspective here. And you see this is your local repository. This is your local repository. So you go into the remotes. You'll find my connection to the one that you created. So just say fetch. It should get you all the latest copy. Okay? So right click. Say fetch. That should get you the latest copy. So in my case, everything is up to date, so I have it all here. Okay? If it is not working, there's some problem, you've got to figure it out. You've got to let me know. Okay? So after the lessons, I can help you troubleshooting. So anytime you want it to be updated, just go into your remote login and then say fetch. You know fetch is from your remote repository to your local repository. And if you want it, you can select that and import projects, then it gets into your workspace. Okay? So from local repository, you can move it into your workspace if you want. Otherwise, you can simply use here for your reference, up to you. So back to our uh, JPA code, right? So you did your first JDBC, you did your first Maven, so today it's going to be first JPA. So new Java project, okay? Your first JPA. I'm going to check the default JRE, okay? And I don't need any library setup because I'm going to manage it using Maven. So select your project, right click, the usual thing that you do, configure it into a Maven project. Okay. So by right, you can give any description you want here. Okay. Okay, my, uh, your first okay. You can actually give any name, I'm just giving SA45 JPTs. And then you say finish. Okay. So immediately you see a POM file. The trick here is to connect this to Hibernate and JPA. Okay. So one of you came back to ask me what do I do here. It's actually in the YouTube and as well as in the GitHub. But in case you missed it in the last demo because it was fast, all you have to do is just say dependencies, plural. Okay. It creates a tag. So you're ready to do any kind of dependency inside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in the dependency from my other sample code. I think I did a sample code, not finished it. Okay. So these are the three dependencies you need and you can you usually copy this code. You don't have to worry about anything. Just copy this, bring it back into your JPA project. Okay. So what have I done there? I've used Entity Manager from Hibernate Framework. I've used Persistence. JPA, okay, additional tools for Hibernate, and I've used a MySQL connector like we did in the morning. Okay. So these three versions are compatible, so I'm just using this. Okay. If you're using different version, you have to make sure it is compatible. So refer to some site and then see the compatibility, then you pick. Okay. You mindlessly pick it from different places, it's not going to work together. Okay. So you've got to take it uh, from your uh, Git library, just figure out which is the compatible versions. If To find out compatible versions, you have to re read release notes and all that. Okay? You don't have to go through this hassle as long as you stick to whatever is being discussed in the classroom. That one we have I've done through the painful process because I want you to not waste time on that. Okay? But if you have finished your project, you want to fiddle around, you can figure all these things. So when I have done this, basically it's going to pick up all these libraries and bring it back into my Maven rep rep dependencies. Do you see there's a lot of uh, jar files now? So it has gone online, picked up all the related jar files and put it inside for me. Okay? So that's all it is. So if it doesn't happen, all I have to do is right click, run as, and Maven install. You remember this is what we did. Okay? Somehow it got, gets corrupted, you're not able to run, there is something that says missing jar. Just say clean, that will delete everything. Okay? Then you can do it again. So again, you can just say right click. So you can see that it cleans, it deletes it. 
just bring it back by saying install. Okay, so clean will delete all the folders that you don't use anymore. So that's all. And if you go back and change this POM file at any point in time, remember to say Maven update project because you have modified your project model. You got to inform your online fetching as well, right? So that instruction is update one. So these are the three commands that you have to understand with reference to main. Okay? So I'm assuming I've done all the relevant jar files. I'm ready to start my project. So the first thing is I need a model class, right? So I go to, uh, I need a, in fact, two things I need. One is a persistence uh, configuration and the other one is a model class. So let me create a very simple uh, class model. Okay. Model. We have bullied the student enough, so this time we'll say staff. Okay. Staff. Okay. Finish. And of course, you can put in anything that you want. Uh, we'll stick to uh, private integer. Uh, staff ID, I'll keep it as simply ID. Okay, and then I'll say private string uh, name, private string nickname. Okay, so this is my class attributes. Okay, so if I want it full, I can call it nickname. That's fine. Okay, so if I want this to change, I can call this a staff name. Okay, anything. As long as you use Hamilton code, it is readable. So I will need my usual stuff, okay? So which is, uh, you know, the uh, sequence. Okay? So first thing is constructor with fields. Then the next one is empty argument constructor. Uh, I do it in a sequence so that it's readable. That's all. Okay? Nothing more than it. You can actually do it in any sequence that you want. I get the getters and setters, okay? And uh, of course, I need a hash code and equals. And the last one is a two string. So I'm needing this. I'm going to compare just based on ID. Okay, so that's my uh, equals method. Then I have my last thing, which is a two string to print the data. Okay, so my model object is ready. So with the main thing is that there is three attributes. Okay, so I got to change this to JPA. But before changing this into JPA, I got to make this whole whole thing as a persistent unit. Okay, this model is too small. What I usually do is I'll have the reverse domain name of my company. Okay. So if I'm working for google.com, my domain space is com.google, reverse. If I work for iss.nus.edu.sg, it is sg.edu.nus.iss, the reverse mapping. Why? It naturally resolves naming conflict for you. There can be two customers, one customer in your ISS, another customer in your SOC. So if you are reverse naming it, they don't conflict each other. Okay. So it's easy that way. So I'm going to create a very simple package. Okay, so let's say new package sg dot edu dot nus. Okay, so what I'm going to do is move this package there. Okay, so just say refactor and then say move this to inside my. Oh, I cannot say that. Right? Let's say refactor. Name. Okay. So I should say uh, sg. So sg. edu. nus. model. Okay. So you can see that it has moved inside. Okay. So I'll create one more package. I'll say new package, and this time I'll say sg. edu. Uh, nus dot test because I'm going to test the JPA class inside. Okay, so I'll write a main program and then test it. Now I need to know how to persist this, which means I need to know what's your data connection, what's my username, password and all that, right? So what I have to do is I have to make this into a JPA project first. So I select my project and then say configure, configure this into a JPA project. Okay. So when I do that, you can see that it introduces another constraint. When it is a Java project, this is the only constraint. It has to be 1.8. That's the only constraint. When I make it into a JPA, it is introducing a new constraint. It says at least JPA 2.1 is set. Okay. So this is what I'm trying to do. If you forgot this step for some reason, you don't know how to do it, you can always bring it up from the project properties. Okay. So this menu is basically called as project facets menu. 
and it is there inside your properties you can bring it back anytime so i want to say that's fine okay so this is the source file if i have any generators i can link it up here okay for now i just uh, use the eclipse links i'll later teach you how to use eclipse link okay so i'm just connecting it and i'm saying finish if there is nothing you can just uh, leave it free there's not there's not a problem at all so the moment you do that you see that it creates a file called persistence.xml and that's the key file that's going to connect to the database okay so when i open that you see initially it will be empty no properties just like your pom file it's just a persistence unit okay and the persistence unit usually refers to your project name so we got to do some changes here okay so what are the changes it's just a username password and a few other settings so what i'll do is to keep it easy and not get you bored i'll bring it up from here okay so these are the properties that i need let me just put it up then i'll explain why we need that and what we're doing there and you know. so there is um, a description and the base that you go to and i think we call it as sg.nus so edu.nus this is your basic package right so declare that here okay. so i'm saying um change your package okay which is uh, sg.nus.edu that's your fundamental package this package is going to be persisted so jpa will take control of that particular folder and then you got to declare which class your model comes from so in that case i'll say nus. Uh, um i missed edu okay so i got to say sg.edu.nus.model.staff okay so i've just used the staff here you can give any description you want this doesn't matter okay uh, this is uh, a demo for a sad class at 4 pm waiting to run away okay so we have a, a very pathetic situation i see that's there okay and then you're going to say what is your persistence architecture you can use eclipse link you can use hibernate since I told you Hibernate is a bit sophisticated, you can see that my preference is Hibernate. So I'm putting Hibernate as the uh, provider or the, uh, the the guy that deals with the factory and all that. So when I say Hibernate, I've got to give them connection details. So you can say that this is the URL I'm going to use. Um, do we have a demo one? I don't know what, what uh, database we created. SA45 demo, right? Okay, so let's see. We'll use the same thing. We don't have to use them. Just making sure it works because I didn't want last minute surprises. You don't have to enter this every time, I just remember it so that it avoids asking you questions. So we have an SA45 demo, we have a student. We are just going to create a staff here. Okay, from we'll do a forward engineering. So from code to here. So SA45 demo is the stable name. I'm going to give that SA45 demo. Does it look same? It's case sensitive, right? SA45 demo. This is SA45 demo. Okay, so it looks okay to me. Uh, username is root, password is password, driver is the old driver because I'm using 5.1. I'm not going to 6.06 .06 .06 like in the morning. So that's fine. I'm going to use my hibernate as my dialect. So I'm saying use hibernate dialect. These things don't change, just use the same. Okay? And I want to see the hibernate query because I want to understand how hibernate query gets generated. So then I'm saying this true. If you don't want this, just put this back to false. It gets silenced. Okay. The battery is telling me stop. <laughs> I'm not going to give up. <laughs> Somebody programmed it, I guess. I 
Are any one of you working for SMG? No. See, we have the MTech students working for SMG. Yeah, the recording is wasted, right?